Hello, America. I'm Mark Levin, and this is Life, Liberty, and Levin. Finally, right? I've really missed you folks a lot. It's been two weeks. I hope you had a great Christmas, and I hope our new year is great. It's going to be a battle. No question about it. Just because the calendar flips doesn't mean things go away, and all of a sudden things are all sunny. But it was nice having a little time off, wasn't it? Actually, it's hard for me to do things with time off because the mind just keeps percolating. I can't help it. We have two great guests for you this Saturday. We have Christopher Rufo, the Manhattan Institute Senior Fellow, City Journal Contributing Editor. We also have Colonel Richard Kemp, former Commander of British Forces in Afghanistan, former Chairman of the Cobra Intelligence Group. He has been spending a lot of time in the country of Israel. I want to talk to him about what's going on in the world, and particularly there as well. But before we do that, I want to talk about what's going on right here at home. And it's been going on for decades, right under our noses. And this is why the ruling class in America has failed us so horrendously, either by incompetence and inattention or intentionally. And I'm talking about Congress. I'm talking about our state legislatures. I'm talking about the executive branch. And yet, for the Democrat Party, this is probably all good, because the Democrat Party hates America. I think I read that somewhere. There was a report put out on December 19th of last year. By my calculation, that's less than a month ago. And it wasn't covered in the media. Now, why is that? It seems to be a very, very important report as far as I'm concerned. Well, part of the problem is the media spends 90% of their time trying to trash Donald Trump and his supporters. Uh, the other 5% of its time, it spends on stupid stuff. But this is a report, foreign funding of U.S. academia. Now, wouldn't you think that would be compelling? I mean, if you're a news organization, you don't have to do any research. All you have to do is read. Well, maybe they read it and they chose to ignore it. Let me tell you what's going on here in this report. This is crucial. It says foreign nations have donated $43 billion to American universities since 1990. $43 billion. Well, what are they buying? Well, we know what they're buying. Minds, hearts, and souls. The Department of Education published a report in October 2020 that highlighted funding from foreign adversaries was massively underreported, quote unquote. The Trump administration was trying to get its hands around this, not the current administration. And it highlighted funding from foreign adversaries. The conclusions were drawn from investigations into the underreporting of millions of dollars worth of gifts and contracts from communist China, fascistic Russia. Saudi Arabia and Qatar at 12 prestigious American universities. According to a recent study, higher levels of campus anti-Semitism and a decline in free speech norms are associated with this unreported foreign funding of American universities from authoritarian governments. An astounding 300 percent increase in anti-Semitism at U.S. universities has been linked to $13 billion dollars in undisclosed foreign funds from 2014 to 2019. The undisclosed donations have been made by governments in the Middle East, China, and Russia. Harvard, Yale, Georgetown, they were among the top recipients of concealed donations. According to the report, the majority of schools have business dealings with Huawei, a Chinese tech giant connected to the Chinese Communist Party. According to early findings, most of the 12 schools that they cite have had financial dealings with Huawei, the Chinese tech giant that some U.S. officials say is a threat to national security. And at least one had ties directly to the Chinese Communist Party. You would think they were all run by Hunter Biden. It goes on. Others had deals with Russian government and institutions in Saudi Arabia and Qatar. The 12 schools revealed $6.5 billion in foreign funding that had previously gone unreported after coming under federal scrutiny. A recent study found unreported foreign funding of U.S. universities from authoritarian governments is linked to higher levels of campus anti-Semitism and a decline in free speech norms. Unreported foreign funding of the U.S. universities by Qatar. That's key. The tiny little nothing nation. Oil was found under it, and it is using its money to promote terrorism, to buy the minds of our people in our own schools, and to buy politicians in this country, and I might add, not only 
in the Biden administration, the Obama previous administration, but Republicans, too. Republicans, too. Unreported foreign funding of universities by Qatar and other authoritarian governments is linked to higher levels of campus anti-Semitism and a decline in free speech norms. $13 billion in undisclosed foreign funds has been linked to a staggering, as I said, 300 percent rise in anti-Semitism. The Institute for the Study of Global Anti-Semitism and Policy Studies, based on earlier research, that discovered that Middle Eastern governments, as well as China and Russia, had made billions of dollars in undisclosed donations to U.S. universities from 2014 to 2019 in violation of federal U.S. law. Receipt of undocumented money was associated with increase of campus anti-Semitism, I said, and this relationship was larger when the undocumented funding came from Middle Eastern authoritarian states. Receipt of undocumented money was associated with increased levels of campus anti-Semitism, and this relationship was larger when the undocumented money was added in. Qatar was the largest single donor, providing $2.7 billion in concealed funds, while Harvard, Yale, and Georgetown were among the top recipients of concealed donations. A sizable portion of this $13 billion in unreported donations from overseas nations between 2014 and 2019 came from mostly Marxist, Islamist, and fascist regimes. Think about that. Over 200 universities in this country, including elite institutions like Carnegie Mellon, Cornell, Harvard, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, have been accused of raking in $13 billion in undocumented contributions from foreign governments. And a sizable portion of those funds were said to be donated from authoritarian regimes all over the world. Again, they mentioned Qatar, Saudi Arabia, China, the UAE. That's a report from the Network Contagion Research Institute. A May 2023 report from the American-Israeli Cooperative Enterprise found the Arab countries like Qatar, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Kuwait, and Egypt were the top donors to American universities. According to a study published in 2022 by the National Association of Academics in the United States, a study that did not cause too much noise at the time, in the period between 2001 and 2021, precisely after the 9-11 attacks, the Qataris donated a whopping $4.7 billion to universities in the United States. The recipients, however, did not report part of the money received as required by federal law. Again, Qatar is the largest foreign donor to American academia, followed by Communist China, followed by Saudi Arabia, and then Russia. Qatar's donations are paving the way for the deepening influence of its shadows over more and more fields and geographic areas. It says, in the United States, it was believed that deepening the cooperation with Qatar and receiving donations to establish branches of prestigious American universities were another way to expand its soft power. But in practice, it became the opposite. Through its vast capital, Qatar is paving the way for the deepening influence of its shadows over more and more fields of geographical areas, especially in the United States. Cornell, Georgetown, Northwestern, and Carnegie Mellon universities who've received the most funding from Qatar have established satellite schools in Doha, Doha, the capital of Qatar. Cornell, which belongs to the American Ivy League, or as I've been saying, the Poison Ivy League, and others have graciously repeated that. It's very important. It's the Poison Ivy League. They opened a medical school for $1.8 billion. Georgetown received $750 million for, for a school of government. So they're funding specific schools within the universities. And Northwestern established a journalism school, I wonder if Jake Tapper went there, for which it received $600 million in 2007. The report is more fulsome than what I'm reading to you right here. Isn't this breaking news that academia has been bought and paid for by communist, fascistic, Islamist regimes? By monarchies? Isn't that important to know? Students for Justice in Palestine, the Hamas funding network are all involved in our colleges and universities. These colleges and universities have become Stalinist-like rat nests. And that's why we have so many tenured professors who hate America, Marxists and Islamists. That's why you're seeing what you're seeing in the streets. And I'll even take it further. 
That's why I think you saw the riots in 2020, that all these elements came together, the Marxists like BLM and Antifa, the Islamists on our, on our college campuses and so forth. That was the time to really try and take down our cities and take down America, right? These are the forces that are at work. It's not America. It's not the American people. We also are funding this. Our state legislatures, even Republican legislatures, continue to write checks to colleges and universities blindly. And when we have a governor who actually stands up to that, they're under attack by Republicans, by rhinos, by establishment Republicans. So the ruling class in Washington, D.C., and the ruling classes in state capitals all over the country, Democrat and Republican, have closed their eyes. China, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Russia, and others own our colleges and universities. That's a fact. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.